start on the far side of the room. If you can wave your hand so that they can see you. Oh, I'm Brian Grant. I'm a junior. Uh, class as well as a junior in high school. Okay. I'm Derek Kowalski. Uh, we're doing the state. I'm taking this class for I'm Star Knighton, so I'm not in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, with Otten Incorporated, but I'm also working on my associate degree. Um, I'm Brianna Barak. I'm a junior, and I'm taking this class. Uh, pretty much the same as you know, Brian, and I'm an associate at Chase. Can you all hear? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm Amber Leonard. I'm a senior this year, and I'm taking this because I don't want to take chances on not getting it in AP, so <laughs> might as well get the college credit while you can. Okay. I'm Aiden. Um, I'm a junior, and I'm taking it because it's cheaper to do it now than when I'm in college. My name is Savannah Marie Gregory. I'm a senior, and I'm taking it for the same reason as because it's cheaper. Okay, great. Well, my name is Katrina church Chimilowski, and I am the director of the campus here at Copper Basin. I've been fortunate enough to uh, teach history for several years now. It's one of my geeky favorite subjects. Um, you'll find that I'm pretty much a total geek when it comes to certain things. Uh, so, you can laugh at me, that's fine. <laughs> I laugh at me, that's that's how it is. Um, <clears throat> I have been working and teaching at the college for 18 years, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Never thought I would want to be a teacher, uh, especially after high school and meeting some teachers that were maybe not so entertaining or um, didn't uh, inspire me as much as possible, but uh, I am really happy to be teaching and uh, working at the college and working with all of you. So just a few housekeeping notes. Your syllabus is on Blackboard. Have any of you been able to uh, view the syllabus yet? Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, may I borrow yours, Savannah? I left mine in the, in the other room. Your syllabus is uh, pretty long, and you'll notice that it has two timelines on it, okay? The back timeline is for dual credit only, okay? So all the high school kids that you have, you, you see here in this room, uh, have a very unique schedule at the school district and so in order to accommodate that and include them in as many of the classes as possible I've created a new schedule uh, that they alone will be holding to okay so if we can just go through the the syllabus um, it gives the my name the course information okay class is um, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 125. Actually, let me pull it up on the computer here. Since you can see the computer, we can do that. We have the technology that actually works. Yes, today, not so much. Okay. Can you see the, can everyone see the syllabus? All right, so class meets Tuesdays, Thursdays, 12 to 125, free credit class. I'm available, um, my appointment, you can contact me either at my house or here at the college. You can um, 
contact me between the hours of 9 and 7. Okay, I have pretty flexible, open office hours. Um, one of my goals is for you to be successful, and I have found that two hours or four hours of a week isn't always, I, I'm not able to, to talk to as many students as possible and, and meet their needs. So you can call me. I list both my home and my work phone numbers. You can email me. If you have not heard from me, you need to call. Okay, if you've emailed me and I haven't responded, call me. If you've called me and I haven't responded, email me. Okay? Because a lot of times I'm I'm in and out and uh, but I am generally I try to uh, be connected at some at some point. Alright, so the course catalog description recommended English one way or higher. It's a survey course of history up to 1877. What does that mean? Anybody? Anything before 1877 wasn't covered? Anything and everything, Aiden. Yes. Yes. When I say survey, it is a huge, huge topic. Okay? Um, if you um, if you get behind, I have to tell you, it's not going to be very easy to catch up. So I have, in that, I have posted the first couple chapters of the book on Blackboard. Because who here has their book? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All right. So, um, sorry. I'm not used to recording it. And it's recording. It's recording my uh, from the webcam. So I have a new appendage. All right. Uh, let's see. So we're going to talk about exploration, discovery. Okay. And we talk about what is discovery. Is it really a discovery? Good question. Colonial period, American Revolution, Constitution. I get to do Constitution Day. Does anybody know what day that is? Oh, keep going. September? September. Pretty close. Seventeenth. September seventeenth. Constitution Day. Okay. Uh, the federal period. Jefferson. And Jacksonian democracy, industrialism, sectionalism, slavery, abolitionism, the Civil War, and Reconstruction. All right. Um, I have to say that we don't cover a lot of the Reconstruction in the first uh, semester. Normally, we do most of that in the second semester. Okay, because there's an overlap in the book and in the chapters. Right. So my goal is to introduce you to what I think is a really fun topic, and that would be history. And maybe get you a little excited about it. Okay? So it really can be exciting. It's not just dates. I am not all about dates. Um, I am about knowing reasons why things happen. I am about knowing and wanting you to know that uh, history isn't just war. It's everything in your society. It includes how people dress, how people eat, uh, where they live, why they live there, the economy. History is an all-encompassing topic, all right? So one of the ways that I really find that students can relate to history is to create a um, and engage you in stories, all right? The story, because Every single, single soldier in the Civil War had a story, right? Think of, your, think of yourselves. You all have stories, every one of you. You're living a story, right? What do you think, Valdez? Yeah. Okay. You don't have to put yourself on mute if you don't. This is kind of bug out every now and then. Okay. Am I cutting out or are you cutting out? No, it's just our mics. Oh, okay. Yours is just mine. All right, great. Okay, so the story is 
how I find people really engage. All right. So I go hunting for stories. I spent, we spent, my family spent four weeks, and then I kind of drove them all over the east coast of of uh, the United States this summer, and we looked for stories. Right. Um, we have somebody dying in here because my son is in this class, <laughs> and he was one that I drugged, but he was pretty happy about it actually, if he was honest. Um, and so my other goal is for you guys to all be successful, all right? I don't want you to dislike history. I don't want you to earn poor grades. I really want you to be successful. So if you're having a problem, the first step in succeeding is to contact me, all right? Call me, um, tell me up front, you know, uh, you can email me. However you need to get a hold of me, do so. All right, because communication is the first step to succeeding. All right, so the required text is the enduring vision, and I give handouts as uh, as they come up. All right, scoring is pretty basic from, uh, you know, 90 to 100 is an A, 89 to 80 a B, 79 to 70 a C, and so on. All right, course requirements, I give homework. Uh, I give exams, I give research paper, you're going to do a research paper, and then participation and contribution is a huge part of this class, all right, because I don't want to stand here and listen to myself lecture for an hour and a half. Um, I don't find that very engaging. I don't find the stories come alive. Um, I'm looking for participation from all of you, okay? So, and you're grading 15% of the class is your participation. And I do pay attention to who answers and who offers suggestions. Uh, I do call on people a lot because I want everybody to contribute. Okay. Uh, homework is assigned is 20%, and that's where your current events are. Any quizzes that I give, um, I will probably be giving some more quizzes this semester as opposed to some of my previous classes because you have only three exams. And, I don't know, I find people sometimes procrastinate and don't always read when they are supposed to be reading. <laughs> and so quizzes help keep people accountable, but it also helps um, make sure that you understand the material. And that's really the point of the quiz. Um, I don't particularly care about catching anybody who hasn't read. That's not who I am. But uh, if you do read, your participation is much greater, okay, and the contribution to the class. So really, it's a uh, it's a it's a very effective way for all of us to learn in the participation and contribution. Your exam one is includes an introduction in chapters one to five. Exam two, six to eleven, and exam three is twelve to sixteen. That is a take home exam. All right because it's due the same week that your research paper is due. With your research paper, a five-page paper, and uh, there comes a presentation with that. If you don't do the presentation, that's 50 points off the top, okay? So if for some reason you miss a final, you need to uh, make arrangements with me because 50, 50 points off the top of 150 is quite a bit. All right? Any questions? good everybody so it's really hot in this room I don't know what it's like normally it's freezing in Valdez but today it's hot are you still there Valdez yeah we're still here the camera just did something hold on okay yeah you, you're blue again No luck yet? Oh. Nope. Can't press a con. I'm going to look at that. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have to press content again. You can't press a content. So pr press content again and click over and it should show a red line.
at least it's coming and going again. So any questions about the grading and what's required? No? All right, so homework uh, is generally worth 10 points per assignment unless I've noted it elsewhere, all right? I can announce it in class. A lot of times, you know, when somebody can't come up with what document starts with we the people, that generally ends up as an assignment for the day, <laughs> okay? I would normally assign that during class. Um, for those of you who are gonna be outside of class on the, uh, on the screen, uh, I will post that on Blackboard, okay? So everybody will have the same access. Um, okay, it's your responsibility to know when everything is due, okay? So if you miss a class, either contact me or get on Blackboard or get with your other um, classmates. Your written current events with presentations, 100 points each, 200 total points. One legislative and one from the media. Okay, we're going to cover that a little bit uh, later. Written current events, okay? Not only are we engaging in stories, we're making history relevant to your life, okay? When the stock market is crashing as it is today, we're going to go through 1929 and you're going to look and you're going to read about some of the reasons that it crashed and you're going to see some of the same reasons happening today in 2007. Some of the, some of the uh, things that they put into place to keep the stock market from, stock market from crashing again after 1929, they took out of place and guess what happened? Anybody? Crash. Woo! <laughs> Brilliant, right? <laughs> so we're going to see that and we're going to take that and make it relevant, okay? So current events is one way to make that relevant to your life. Your research paper, 100 points. The draft is um, research paper outline and works cited, 20 points each. Okay, a lot of people don't turn that in for some reason. It's 40 points. It's important to, to turn in your, your homework, okay? Because homework is what? How much is it worth? 20. Yeah, 20%. All right. Um, study groups, uh, review sessions. I offer review sessions. The people who have taken the class before have said that they've been helpful um, in studying for the exams, and I'm happy to do that. I do send out study guides for the exams. You come to the review session with questions. We discuss it. Lo and behold, generally, the people who come to the review sessions do the best on the test. Just throwing that out there. All right. Um, if you want to do extra credit, you need to obtain prior approval, unless I add that to an exam or if I throw some out there um, for out on Blackboard. Plagiarism and cheating, they're really unacceptable. Your grade is going to suffer. Um, you're great for the assignment, it will be a zero. And so if that's an exam, that's a zero. All right, so one of the things that I find is that people really don't know how to cite very well, and they don't cite appropriately. If you have a question in your research paper about how to write it, you need to find out, you need to rewrite it, basically. If you think it might be a problem, rewrite it. All right? Uh, content delivery. I do lectures, I use videos, I use PowerPoint, um, I give handouts, I post handouts on Blackboard, so everything, you have a copy of each PowerPoint, Valdez? Valdez, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we post the power, I post the PowerPoints there, and so you're able to view them, you can take notes on them, you can print them as handouts. So in case, or I should say, when technology goes down, you have something in front of you as to, um, and be able to follow along. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. Um, student presentations, and 
I'm able to get guest speakers occasionally. So, um, so I do bring them in as I can because I find their stories, of course, are, are superb. When, when I hear the stories from uh, my Korean War veteran friends, it makes a huge difference in what I think about um, when I think of or when I visit like the Korean War Memorial in Washington, D.C., right? So good manners, common courtesy, and good citizenship expected. Please respect others and their opinions, okay? I, um, I request that we all hold to this because as a uh, discussion class, everyone is going to have different opinions. And I encourage different opinions, but in order to encourage that, I also request that you honor that. All right? And by that, I mean don't, and I've had this happen, I've had people yelling at each other in class because they disagree with what someone said. Um, that's really not okay. And I will call you out on that and you will, we will have a, a discussion after class regarding that. Okay, that's, that's not okay. Um, my favorite question is why? So if you have an opinion, to me it doesn't matter what your opinion is, I'm going to ask you why you have that opinion. All right? Uh, because I want you to know the facts and I want you to be able to back it up. Okay? Does everybody understand that? Do you understand the importance of that, Valdez? Yeah. Okay. And I ask that you turn your cell phone on, off, and leave it at the front door. Uh, you have to do that for all exams, but it's uh, most helpful if you can do that during class as well. Because it's pretty, um, it, it's pretty uh, obvious when people are checking all their Facebook and scrolling, and scrolling on their phones. And please keep sidebar comments to a minimum. The all the equipment in here is very uh, sensitive, and so even taking a paper and rustling the paper like this sounds really loud on the other end. All right, and let's see. You're welcome to knit or doodle, take notes on your laptop. I just ask that you don't surf the web while we're in class. All right. Um, because you're not going to really benefit from it. You're not going to get the lecture and, and you're not going to do as well. Does that make sense? Everybody okay with that? Okay. All right. Late work is generally a burden, so I want you all to turn in late work. I may not accept it, and I may not definitely accept it after a week. Okay? If you know something is going to be late, you need to tell me. All right, and we need to work that out. Okay, so the timeline. And as I said in the beginning, there are two timelines. This is the main timeline. This is for all of the Valdez students. And this is for um, all of the students who are not dual credit or who can accommodate the non-TREC schedule. All right, when I say reading homework, the reading homework on August 25th is, re is to read the prologue in chapter one. And where can you find it? Black. On black, very good, thank you. Okay, that reading homework is due for August 27th. All right, so on August 27th, we can discuss chapter one, All right? And it follows the same way. September 8th, there's no class for you in Valdez. All right. I, this, I get, we get behind occasionally on the chapters. And so sometimes you'll see chapters three, four, some tr kind of transitioning. Um, some of my PowerPoints, uh, when I go in on these tours of, of uh, historic sites, I take a lot of, of photographs, uh, you know, to try to give you a sense of the story. I try to give, give you a sense of the primary sources, 
I include a lot of prim primary sources, like documents. Does everybody know what a primary source is? Yes, yes, could be. Um, Morgan, can you give me a description of a, or a, a primary source? Or any, actually, sorry, I didn't mean to pick on just one of you. How about Valdez? A description of a primary source. Right, or an example of a primary <laughs> source. What could you use as a primary source? I could use a journal directly from the soldier during World War II or something. Excellent, yes. Yes. Um, newspapers. So when I go and I went to a, I went to a great uh, uh, presentation on the Stamp Act, and so I was able to go through the primary sources of the Stamp Act and see the stamped papers, so I took photographs of those for you. Okay, and I include them in your in your PowerPoints. All right, so homework due, research paper topic, September 15. Everybody got that? Important date. All right. Exam 1, September 24. Constitution Day. We don't get to do it on Constitution Day. Some of you get to do it early. Some of you get to do it later. <laughs> All right, but you all get to do Constitution Day because I think it's a pretty good document myself. All right, uh, we get to discuss the Bill of Rights. Your research, research paper outline and bibliography are due October 20. November 5th, exam two. We get to read the Gettysburg Address. Research paper draft is due November 24. That's a lot of paper for me to read. So I always try to make a lot of comments on the papers. I may not be able to accomplish all of that. Everyone here um, is eligible for extra credit. If they take the paper and have it reviewed and edited by someone in the adult basic education department, the tutoring that we have, or through the writing center at UAF. Yes? So my mom's got an editing job. Would she not count for that? Um, you and I can discuss that after class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, and and one reason that I do that is because, holy cow, it really improves your papers, right? It helps you, and it really helps me. Okay. So remember, extra credit for that. Your Paper presentations are due on December 8th. That is the time of our standard uh, final exam. Okay, so that's basically your final, except your final take home is due on December 11th. All right, you have student learning outcomes. Every general education requirement class that you take has student learning outcomes, okay? Talk about distinguishing fact from opinion, understanding the basic events, um, basic trends, understanding of basic trends in political life, uh, social life, economic life, your favorite item. Um, and an understanding of America's past and how it shaped America's present and will shape its future. Okay? Um, that's the last one listed on here, but in my mind, this is what makes it relevant to you. So, I've delineated what the outcomes are for you. Okay, questions, comments. Can you go back up? Sure. Yes. <coughs> questions and comments, Valdez. Uh, can we choose any topic to research for you? Yes, you can, up to 1877. That's what I thought. I encourage you to uh, to find something that really interests you. No one take Gandhi, I called it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's got to be something linked to American history. 
Bruins and Gandhi. There. Okay, so if you can if you can link Gandhi to U.S. history, you go for it. Yes. Another question. A couple, couple questions on current events. Um, one, what is current defined as? Like, what time period is current? Okay. Is it 2015 or current events is in the last 30 days. Okay, and we're going to get to that. Any other questions on the student learning outcome? No? No. Okay. All right, so current events. Everyone has to do two current events. Generally, you do them the same day. All right, you um, will do that. You have 15 minutes to present your current events. You should be prepared for questions from the class. And the class, remember part of the participation grade, you should be prepared to ask questions from the current events, okay? You'll choose one from legislation and one from the media. So there are a lot of examples of legislation. Um, House Bill 40, Second Amendment. Uh, you can choose oil tax. Um, and that's legislation, right? Anything that has to go through Congress or the state legislature or um, students from other states have done legislative events from their states. Okay, Can, it, can anyone think of any other examples that you've been following? What about any new bills that are going to be passed soon or are being debated? Okay. Yes. Those are those are definitely current. Taylor, did you have some? I say that over. I didn't hear you very well. It can be politics. Um, if you like in the media, okay, they have the. I forget the technical term, but the, the list of uh, that's been released, and it lists all these people who sign up for the adultery site website, right? That is very political, um, but it's a media current event, okay? Because that's where it's coming out. It's, it's not part of the legislation. It's part of the media. But it's linked to politics, of course, because you have White House on down, um, and military involved as well, right? Talk about something like the presidential race. Would yes. that count? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, because not all politics. Because Donald Trump's basically Facebook right now. <laughs> Everything's Facebook. Well, there are a lot of Facebook things. I tell you, that's how I find all my students up here. I'll play Trump. <laughs> Facebook, Facebook, and more Facebook. That's right. Well, but and that's a great that's a great distinction because um, you know, do you believe everything you read on the web? No. No. And do you believe everything you read on Facebook? No. I no. play Facebook for games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See? Um, but there are some things that show up on Facebook that are legit, right? So you have to be able to discern that, and that's what this class is about, is figuring out what's true and what's not, and how to use that, and what it means. What it means to you, but also what it means to your state, and what it means to the nation, and eventually globally, right? Because it's all interconnected. Okay. Um, any other questions on the difference between media and, and legislative current events? Current events. Can you? Go ahead. We were just reading the syllabus and said no current events on a couple of days. That's correct. So when we come to class next uh, Thursday, we're going to divvy up the dates, and you're going to choose dates. So what I need you to do, here's your first piece of homework. I need you to choose a date where you can... Um, where you can look uh, and and participate in your present on your current event. Okay. 
All right. All right. So we'll we'll try to fill that in on Thursday. Actually, we may. Go ahead. No, you don't have to think of the current event. You just need to sign up for a date so we can get all the dates scheduled and then you can uh, choose your current event as it gets closer to the date. Do natural disasters fit into the name? Of course. It relates to history, right? Because it's creating, I mean, Hurricane Katrina created history, right? It wrote history for quite a while. And it's still writing history. Anything else? Okay, disability services. We have a disability support services program that can provide assistance to any student. Um, it is a self-disclosed disability service. You can contact me on this campus or uh, student services in Valdez for confidential help, okay? And there are many accommodations that can be made um, under disability services. And then the other mandatory item on your on all syllabi is your Title IX, sexual harassment, sexual violence, and gender-based discrimination policy. Okay? It, uh, it leads you through Title IX. It gives you the name. If you feel that you have uh, been discriminated against or any of this has happened to you, you contact Ryan Vilnap or Anna Hinkle or myself, and um, we will... There are investigations and uh, and set that process into motion. Okay, any questions? All right, right now I'm not going to go through the dual credit. Um, the dual credit timeline, but I wanted you to know that it's there. So for you and Valdez, this does not apply to you. Okay, because. Uh, because of the schedule for these high school students. All right. But if you can all, if all the high school students can stay an extra 10 minutes after class, we'll talk about this. Okay. Um, questions or comments? No? We're good? Everybody clear on what your first homework assignment is? It is find a date, yes. Yes, and that's that is also due. Okay. On Blackboard there is an assignment listed, posted. Sorry, it's like uh, five questions. And for those of you who cannot access Blackboard yet, um, I have I can print them out for you so that you can have them ready for class and be on time because nobody ever procrastinates, right? Right, Valdez? Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, we start every class with a quotation. And I ask people at different sites to read the quotation, and then we, we start it as a discussion. And so the history quotation for today is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Who would like to read it today? Someone from Valdez. Taylor. My name's not Taylor. All history is real. <laughs> the record of its... It's perversion. Yes. All history is a record of its perversion. What? What do you think of that? What do we think of that? Yeah. What, what would you say to that? What would you say to Emerson if he told you that? What perversion? I'd say people would get really pissed at him. <laughs> okay. Perversion is how things are twisted. Okay? It's been changed. It's been twisted. Okay? So all history is a record of its perversion. So has all history been recorded and twisted? You think? In the Catholic Church. Okay. All right. So I heard Catholic Church. I said yes. I heard yes. Um, explain that. 
Why do you say that? Why do I say that? Most times when you think of something that is influential, that's on a wide scale, there's a lot of tweaking and hinting towards certain things which change the meaning of words to get people to realize that that's what they want. And when you record that, people are recording the misdeeds and misdirection of what they're writing and doing at the time. Okay. So it's more than perception, is that what you're saying? Okay. Pretty much. Okay. All right, I heard some other answers. Uh, Derek, why do you say that? Oh, only the winners write history. Okay. Uh, Savannah, what did you have to say? Okay. Okay. Or they may know the inner workings of one portion of the government. Maybe. Or um, maybe the victors are the ones who have the writing system and are, aren't able to, to write, right? Okay. But, and we'll get into that. I, you all, and Emmanuel, you also, do you go by Emmanuel? Yeah, it doesn't matter what you really call me. Okay. Well, I try to call people by what they prefer to call, so. Mm -hmm. You have a nickname? We're all good? Okay. All right. So you all hit on the various things that are true. Okay? Um, is that the whole truth? <gasps> No, it's, it's not the whole truth. None of what everyone has said is the whole truth. But bits and pieces are. Okay? So, um, I found this. I was, I was flipping through Ralph Waldo Emerson's journals in Concord, Massachusetts. And I ran across this and I, I almost fell out of my chair. Because I was like, wow, where did that come from? You know? I mean, the... the Philosopher, transcendentalist who changed um, American literature practically wrote this. You know? Okay, so. Sorry, I keep flipping back and forth between computers, and so I keep hitting the wrong computer screens. Okay. All right, so um, the introduction, what is history? Is there anything that isn't history? Amber. No, there is nothing that isn't history because everything is related, right? It's all part of the greater story, okay? So Webster's definition is a tale or story, a chronological record of significant events as affecting a nation or institution, often including an explanation for their causes. Okay? An explanation. Hmm. Who wrote the explanation? Whose perspective did it come from? And is it your truth? Brianna might disagree. I mean, Brianna might be racing and see something happen, and somebody ten people back might see something completely different. Right? Um, so, history is all-encompassing. Um, and then you have Herodotus and Thucydides, who basically are the fathers of, histor of, of history. Okay? They, um, they were on the forefront of writing history. And here we get to one of my favorite quotes, all history is the record of its perversion. This, it makes me smile every time I read it, because... There's such truth to part of that, but there's such cynicism, on the other hand, to it, right? Okay, so 
Is there cyclical history? Is there linear history? Are there both types of history? Any idea, Morgan? She hasn't got an answer. Okay. Well, is there a cyclical history or linear history? Is there both? Any idea? Cynical or linear? Cyclical. Okay. Cyclical or linear? Okay. Cyclical is um, linear is more of a Western thought. Okay. Cyclical is if you go way back to the ancient Greeks. Okay. Everything happened in a cycle. So history was going to repeat itself. All right. Linear history is more Western, where X happened, which means that Y happened, which means Z happened, and that's how it follows. Okay, you just follow the line down because of these consequences. Yes, Aiden. I think overall it's linear, but there are cyclical portions throughout history where something might repeat itself. But it's like the baseline is linear, but then you have like circles on top of that line. Okay, all right. That's a that's a very good assessment. Um, you can't choose just one because there are things that happen. I mean, the crash and the crash, <laughs> and and are we in a possible crash today? Maybe. Okay. Has anybody heard how much it fell today? The Dow. It fell five hundred and eighty. I can't hear you. It fell five hundred and eighty eight yesterday. Right, and it fell eight or nine hundred the day before. Um, you know, if you're in stocks, not very happy. Okay, are all are all written records history? No, why not? There is fiction. You're right. So it's not all, is it? It was kind of a trick question because I try never to use the word all or every, right? Because there is no all or every. Right, so written records, are they history? They can be considered history. If you go to court and you have a journal and you're up against someone who has no journal, what's entered as evidence? The journal, okay? Is it history? Well, you wrote it down, so you, you're you now, it's it's being counted as history. Okay? Um, our oral traditions history. Because, I mean, if it's a tradition, tradition started somewhere historically, they kept up. So, just by the word, it's historical. Right. Stuff. Okay? Yes, oral traditions are absolutely history. All right? And if you look at the history of Alaska, the oral tradition and the written tradition are very different. And what's correct? Okay. What's correct? Any idea in in uh, Valdez? What's correct? Yeah, the oral history or the written history? Yeah, for the state of Alaska. For the state of Alaska? Uh-huh. Both of them would be correct depending on what situation you're in. Okay, thank you. Yes, both. Because the oral history um, is, after, is from the very beginning, especially when the, with the Russian-American company, is diametrically opposed, pretty much, to what the Russians wrote. Okay? So the Russians wrote one uh, bank of history, which, by the way, there are... There was really one book that was written on the history of Alaska, that two other people used to write the history of Alaska. And so almost all of the written history of Alaska is based on the one book, okay? And it doesn't match the oral history, like at parts at all, okay? So when you look at, the, at those two histories, you go, okay, well, somebody, somebody's truth is different here, isn't it? Okay. 
All right, so how do you tell history? People write about it, they retell it, okay, storytellers. How is history interpreted? Most often by telling a story, or most often by somebody reading something and using those experiences that you talked about, Savannah, and using those experiences to form their opinion about what it means. They interpret it, okay? So if you read a history book, the history book that you have has been interpreted, okay? Some history books are better at not having a bias in their interpretation than others. Uh, you, as good as any history book is, you can find the bias in the book. Sometimes I'll read the chapter and go, really, did you really have to say it that way? Because you just come, you're just really showing your bias here, okay? Um, which leads me to, is history interpreted? Absolutely. And is it unbiased or fair or accurate? Boy, if you're, a, if you're a history major or if you're a historian, you want it to be unbiased and fair and accurate. Um, you work very hard for that. Not everybody is a historian, though, are they? Not everybody who writes a book is a historian, and they write it down. Um, not every historian can hold that because everyone comes from their own experience and their own view, okay? So they form their opinions based on that, right? As I said, at, historians try to be fair and accurate. You know, journalists also say that they try to be fair and accurate. Cynics say, no, journalists aren't fair and accurate. Cynics say historians aren't fair and accurate. Who decides? Who decides what story to tell and who decides how to tell the story? Okay? The Western version of World War II is very different than the Eastern version of World War II. Anybody know why? Well, in the United States, during World War II, we were. Okay, we weren't. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, it wasn't fought on our on our land. Okay, what else? The Japanese internment camps? Yeah. Okay. They didn't really hide them? Uh, so they're like not in history books. Okay. All right, so who decided what story to tell? Who wrote those stories? Very good, Amber. You're right. They're not in a lot of them. Now, but then you take a book like this, you take this textbook, and you look at it, and there is half a page on the Korean War. Can you tell the story of the Korean War? Actually, it's a page and a half. Can you tell the story of the Korean War in a page and a half? No way. Um, it's really, really difficult to be comprehensive in every subject. Um, do they mention it in this book, the Japanese internment? Yes, they do. And that's one reason I use this book. Um, not every book does. And the reason that I use this book also is because it's the only book that I have found in, in surveying probably 20 different history textbooks that actually includes an entire chapter pre-Columbus, okay? Because one of the benefits of living in Alaska is knowing native uh, history and understanding that native history is integral to the history of the United States and the world, right? So that's one thing that not every history class has. Um, I, I went to a conference. It was the National Endowment for Humanities Program. And it was a week full of history. I mean, uh, 25 of us were chosen from the United States to attend this and participate in this. And there were people who don't teach any native history at all, 
in their history of the United States class. And I'm like, how do you do that? Okay, you, you can't do that. All right, so this class um, has a book that actually addresses some of the native history pre-Columbus, which is extremely important, okay? Um, who decides how to tell the story? Pretty much the person who tells the book, right? Who writes the book? So, this is what I want you to do. Always read history and question who wrote it, when did they write it, why did they write it, what did they write, and what did they leave out. There will always be a component of that in your history, okay? And put history into context when you can. When I give you these quotes, they're totally out of context. Those quotes are to draw your interpretation and to draw your engagement at the beginning of the class. All right? They are out of context. What do you think about these? Any comments? Um, now, I have a question. Yes. Are these, are these the black versions you have to answer every time we're done reading chapters? I, I can't hear. Hey, Emmanuel, can you stop tapping? Right. Sorry. Thanks. Are, are these the questions that you want us to answer after reading every chapter in the textbook? Uh, no, it's not a formal question that you need to answer, but I, I want you to think about it as you're reading the textbook. You know, who wrote this textbook? And when did they write it? You know, if you wrote abolition about abolitionism um, in 1790, it's going to be very different than today, right? I mean, today is very different than even five years ago. If you talk about racial tensions, right? I mean, things, things change really quickly. Okay, so why study history? Is there any work to study? I don't think, I think I'm preaching to the choir mostly here. About these, I know Emmanuel liked history. How about you, Morgan and Taylor? Yeah, I do. Okay. All right. So hopefully you find a, a spot in history that really is interesting to you and that it becomes more engaging. So you probably are two people who would be able to answer this very well. Is there any worth to studying history? Great. <laughs> Yay. A for the day. <laughs> okay. Is there a need to study history? Yeah. Absolutely. Always. There is. There is. You know, in theory, you could stop these cycles, as, as Aiden was talking about, from happening again. And why do you study history? Okay. So history nomenclature, B.C. and C.E. and B.C.E. and A.D., okay? B.P. means before present. Starts January 1 of 1950. Started with radiocarbon dating, right? Generally, when I speak in this class, I use B.C. and A.D., okay? Um, B.C.E. and before current era and current era, Translate to BC and AD. Okay? And that gives you some uh, definition of how that how that works. So different eras. Um, what is US history? Pretty much anything that has to do with where the United States is currently sitting and where their territories are. But it also has to do with where we fought in World War II, right? Or when we fought in the Philippines. All right, so when does U.S. history start? Nope. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, 
Your history starts from the very, very beginning because you can't take that out. You can't just start at a certain date, all right? Everything here, especially in Alaska, is tied to the land, all right? Land resources um, have been the, well, it's one of the major reasons that the pilgrims came, all right? It was one of the major reasons that Columbus came. All right, so why should we care? It's important. Um, all right, so as your book says, there are many tensions amid the beauty, diversity, and resources that we have, and have from the very beginning, since the very beginning of, of uh, time. And Europeans believed that nature was a force to be mastered. The people who were here prior to the Europeans, nature wasn't mastered, it was worked with. Right? Everybody agree? Disagree? I see a nod. At least one, two nods. Three. <laughs> yeah, three nods. Right on. <laughs> okay. Geography. From every exam has a map. At least one map on the exam. Okay? Uh, I'm big on geography because geography has to do with land. Land has to do with the reasons people are here on, on, uh, on the U.S. soil, right, or North American soil, right? So the geography of the U.S. in your prologue, it lists some things, and these, these are important. You need to know, okay, especially things like the Continental Divide, um, the Great Basin, of course, Alaska. I think, I think we're pretty important. Um, the Heartland talks about the Atlantic seaboard, the Appalachians to the Atlantic, okay? Certain areas like the Piedmont and the Tidewater, uh, those are important for you, especially in the, on your first exam. Okay, you need to know where that geography is in order to understand why there was malaria um, and, and why Jamestown failed. Oh, why did it fail? Well, one reason is because there was so much malaria and they had bad water, okay? They had to deal with the geography because they were in a swamp, right? The natives understood what happened in the summer and they moved inland because it was bad water and people got sick. Settlers came, didn't understand, bad water, no food, didn't fare so well, did they? No, <laughs> okay? Geography, it really is key to understanding some of these things, okay? What is discovery? You know, did Columbus discover America? Did not discover America. Um, I'm big on the book 1491. Has anybody read it? No? Okay. Um, there are a lot of, there's a lot of new scholarship out there about um, who were the first people who came to North America, or when it, how much population there was here when Columbus was, when Columbus got here? Yes, Valdez, question? No question, I'm just getting ready to answer when you asked a question. Okay, and then what discoveries were made? Did they discover people? Did they discover resources? Did they discover gold and silver? I mean, think of South America, right? Right? But did the Spanish discover it? Nope. No, no, not at all. It had been used for thousands of years, right? All right, so tribes. 566 federally recognized tribes in the United States. 229 of them are in Alaska, okay? That's a significant portion of the, um, the entities that we know of as federally recognized tribes, okay? And it's significant because the, if you look at the map, can you all see? Can you see if I write on the board? Valdez? Huh. No. No? Okay, so imagine the map of the United States, 
all right? Here's the East Coast. Here's the West Coast. Here's Alaska. We won't count Alaska for now because we're, we're just, well, we're 229. We're awesome, right? So we have the East Coast and we have the West Coast. So the East Coast, if you look at the, at the reservations and the population, the native population of the East Coast, you have dots, if you can find them, okay? Dots on the East Coast. You get over toward the Mississippi, bigger dots, some actual blocks, right? You get over further into the Great Basin, larger dots and, and uh, blocks. In the West, okay? So you can see, you don't, you don't have to really understand history and understand the, um, some of the policies that the United States have to see, to actually physically see that, get a visual of what happened to the natives over time as they were pushed further and further west, okay? And you're gonna see that in, uh, in the book. It, it does a pretty good job of describing some of the policies and how how those policies came to be, um, but it's uh, I have to get another map. I had a map of all the native uh, reservations in the United States. It went missing, I think, two moves ago. But it's a dramatic. I mean, it's a dramatic visual when you when you take a look at it. It's phenomenal. Okay, so that's what we have today. Get on Blackboard, and your homework is to um, do those questions that are on Blackboard and come to class knowing a good time for your current event. Any questions? Um, it's listed on your syllabus. Okay. So, and if you want a color copy of your syllabus because uh, the dual credit is color coded, uh, we can do that. About these, we good? Yeah. Okay, yeah. any questions? Okay, um, next time let's leave the, uh, the mic on. And you're on it? Yeah. Okay. So just you and you have a problem? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Let me check. Let me make sure that you're enrolled in the proper uh, coding. Okay. Okay. So, so before you all leave, I need to, we need to go over this. Okay, so your syllabus, okay, um, I am accommodating